السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم I welcome my dear brothers and sisters in Islam to another episode of the A to Z of Salah Walhamdulillah Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah We are talking about this matter about which we will be questioned on Yom al Qiyamah we will be questioned about it before all other matters. أول ما يحاسب العبد يوم القيامة الصلاة The first matter to be judged on يوم القيامة would be the matter of Salah. يا عبد الله يا أمت الله How strange it is that the individual who when the Mu'addin gives the call حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح Come to success, come to Salah He runs away from it. He does not answer that Mu'addin's call but the last place he will visit before his journey to the graveyard would be what? Would be the masjid. And what's the last thing the Muslims would do upon him? They pray Salatul Janazah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. You can run away from that masjid, but the last place you will visit is that same masjid. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. Alhamdulillah, we've discussed A, B, C, D up to the letter Q. We've dealt with matters up to the letter Q. Q was for qada. We went into that mas'ala in great detail. We also began the letter R, and R was for a rak'ah, a unit of the prayer. And what is a rak'ah? A rak'ah is your standing, and then your ruku, and then your standing up, and then your two sujood. That's one complete unit of the prayer. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, R is also for recitation. Qira'a, recitation of the Noble Qur'an. Masha Allah, in every rak'a, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And then after Surah Al-Fatiha, we have Qira'a, recitation of any number of verses from the Noble Qur'an, any Surah from the Noble Qur'an. Try to stick to the order of the Surahs as per the copy of the Noble Qur'an. But if by mistake, you recited Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas first, and in your second rak'a, you recited Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, your salah is fine, it is all in order, insha'Allah. Sticking to the normal order is best, but changing the order, no problem at all. And sometimes the Messenger وسلم, had done the same. And we know that arrangement of the surahs given to us by the Prophet وسلم, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, R is also for Raf'ul Yadain, lifting up the hands in the prayer. Raf means lifting, Yadain means the two hands. Brothers and sisters, we know at the beginning of the Salah, yes, we say Allahu Akbar and we lift up the hands. Lifting up the hands in Salah is Sunnah. And how does one lift up the hands? One's hands, the palms should be facing towards the Qibla. They should be directed towards the Qibla. You can lift up to your shoulder level. You can lift up to the bottom section of your ear or you can lift up to the upper section of the ear in line with the upper ends of the, of the ear in line with the lower section of the ear or in line of the shoulders do not keep the fingers clasped together don't keep them all just keep them normal relaxed walhamdulillah facing towards the qibla as for the kung fu type of takbir and you must have seen the kung fu takbir what is the kung fu takbir? it's when the brother goes like this and he does that extra movement and his hands are not facing towards the Qibla, but rather towards the ground. Allahu Musta'an. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. There's no fancy takbir like that. Rather, it's towards the Qibla. Walhamdulillah. That was R and R was for Raf'ul Yadain. S is for Sujood. Aqrabu ma yakunu l'abdu min rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest a servant is to Allah when he is in his prostration. فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ and so increase your asking from Allah. The sajda, we go down in this prostration, the hands on the ground, the knees on the ground, the feet on the ground, the forehead and the nose also on the ground. What do you say in your sujood? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. The more times, the merrier, insha'Allah. You can make other dua. Allahumma inni laka sajadtu, wa bika amantu, wa laka aslamtu. 
Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, the one who turns the hearts, make my heart firm upon al-Islam. And you can make whatever other dua you want to make. Note that in your fard prayers, it is advised that you do not use a language besides the Arabic language in your fard prayers. Say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-nar. And if you say it in your sajda, although it's from the Noble Quran, and we know we should not recite Quran in sajda, but you would be saying it as dua and not as qira'a and not as recitation, thus it would be allowed. Brothers and sisters, we advise that make dua in your sajda, in your fard prayers, using the Arabic language. Its chances of being accepted would be higher. Use the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Use the duas from the Noble Quran. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, Sajda to Sahu. How does one perform Sajda to Sahu? S for Sajda to Sahu. So I've made a mistake, I've made an error, I missed out a wajib action. If you miss out a wajib action, you continue your prayer and you make Sajda to Sahu at the end. If you miss out a pillar of the prayer, then you go back to that pillar, you sort it out and you continue from that point, inshallah. If you have not yet come, to the point of that pillar in the next rak'ah. Sajda to sahu you do at the end bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. How? The simplest method, the easiest method of sajda to sahu is that you come to the end of your prayer, so you finish your attahiyat, your durood, your dua, you're almost at the end of your prayer. All that's left is your tasneem, but you don't make tasneem. Allahu Akbar, you go down into one sajda. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Allahu Akbar, you sit. Allahu Akbar, second sajda. Allahu Akbar, you come up from that sajda. And then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's the easiest, simplest method of sajda to sahu. I repeat, come to the end of your prayer and make two sujood before your taslim. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, the letter T. And T is for what? T is for time. The times of the five daily prayers. And we know that Salatul Fajr time enters when? It enters at Fajr as Sadiq, the true dawn. That's when Salatul Fajr time comes in and it expires with sunrise. So Fajr as Sadiq is the beginning time and sunrise is the end time of Fajr. And it is best that you pray Salatul Fajr in the earliest time. Salatul Zuhr begins after Zawal and it ends. When the shadow of an object equals the object, when the shadow of the object equals the size of the object, then Zuhr Salah time has come to an end and automatically Asr Salah time has come in. So Asr Salah time begins when? When the shadow of an object equals the size of the object, that's when Asr time comes in until, until sunset. And Asr has two times, permissible time and darura time. Permissible time and the time of necessity. The time of necessity is once the sun starts getting palish, weakish, it's getting reddish, etc. That's the makru time. You should not delay your asr up to that time. It is a sin if you delay your salatul asr up to that time. But the full salatul asr time, complete salatul asr time ends with sunset. Maghrib time begins after sunset until the twilight. Now what's the twilight? until the redness of the sky still appears. Once the redness disappears, then Salatul Maghrib time has gone out. And then once the whiteness comes in and then complete darkness, all of that is Isha time. So I repeat, Salatul Maghrib begins after sunset until the redness disappears. Once the redness disappears, then it is Salatul Isha time. And that continues until midnight for permissible time and darura time, time of necessity, until the time of Salatul Fajr. That's the five daily prayer times, walhamdulillah. Every one of them, we should pray them in the earliest time, except Salatul Isha. Salatul Isha, it is better if you delay it, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. And all that, it seems we need to take a short break. When we return, we will continue. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, this is Yusuf Estes on behalf of Peace TV, greeting all of you with Ramadan Mubarak. 
the words of wisdom from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahmadillah. Praise Allah first. Achieve true wisdom through the Quran. How is the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How he prayed at night? Allah loves the one who praises the praiseworthy Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you send one salah on the Prophet Allah will send upon you ten salawat. Giving up the mercy of Allah is the act of shaitan. Shaitan wants you to take in that path of evil. He wants you to keep continuing on that path of evilness. Reflect on the verses of wisdom from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Join Yusuf Idris in Revealed Wisdom tomorrow at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 4.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Who was the first prophet? Was a prophet the first one to read and write? Did God speak to a prophet? A prophet in a prison. A prophet who commanded the birds, insects, and animals? Want to know more? Join us for Stories of the Prophet. Stories of the Prophets every Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3 a.m. India on Peace TV. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. One and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind Ishad. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, manual the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in Peacemakers, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We continue, walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, this is our final episode in the series A to Z of Salah. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, we've been going through the matters, etiquettes, masail of salah in the alphabetical order, walhamdulillah. Last we discussed before the break, S and S was for, S was for sajdatu sahu. The easiest method of sajdatu sahu is that you come to the end of your prayer and before your taslim, you go down one sajda, you come back up, second sajda, you come back up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's the simplest method of sajda to sahu, walhamdulillah. And when do we make sajda to sahu? If we miss out a wajib action, we continue our prayer and we make sajda to sahu at the end. Or if we leave out a pillar of the prayer, then if we have not yet reached the position of that pillar in the next rak'ah, then we rewind, perform that pillar, and then continue the salah and perform sajda to sahu at the end. If, for example, we've reached the position of the missed pillar in the next rak'ah, then what happens? The rak'ah, which had a missed pillar, it disappears, and we continue our salah, so we would come with another rak'ah. Example, we've performed the first rak'ah, and in our second rak'ah, we missed the ruku. Then we performed our third rak'ah, and then our fourth rak'ah. And in the fourth rak'ah, we realized, we remembered, that, oh, in my second rakah, I missed out a ruku. Then what happens? You cannot rewind. You cannot go back. You cannot correct it. The second rakah which had the missed ruku disappears. 
It's like it no longer applies. And your third rak'ah became your second. Your fourth rak'ah became your third. And you come with one more rak'ah, insha'Allah. And you make sajda to sahu at the end. Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, the letter T. And T is for what? T is for time. The times of the five daily prayers. And we know that Salatul Fajr time enters when? It enters at Fajr as Sadiq, the true dawn. That's when Salatul Fajr time comes in and it expires with sunrise. So Fajr as Sadiq is the beginning time and sunrise is the end time of Fajr. And it is best that you pray Salatul Fajr in the earliest time. Salatul Zuhr begins after Zawwal and it ends when the shadow of an object equals the object. When the shadow of the object equals the size of the object, then Zuhr Salah time has come to an end and automatically Asr Salah time has come in. So Asr Salah time begins when? When the shadow of an object equals the size of the object, that's when Asr time comes in until, until sunset. And Asr has two times, permissible time and Darura time. Permissible time and the time of necessity. The time of necessity is once the sun starts getting palish, weakish, it's getting reddish, etc. That's the makru time. You should not delay your asr up to that time. It is a sin if you delay your salatul asr up to that time. But the full salatul asr time, complete salatul asr time ends with sunset. Maghrib time begins after sunset until the twilight. Now what's the twilight? Until the redness of the sky still appears. Once the redness disappears, then Salatul Maghrib time has gone out. And then once the whiteness comes in and then complete darkness, all of that is Isha time. So I repeat, Salatul Maghrib begins after sunset until the redness disappears. Once the redness disappears, then it is Salatul Isha time. And that continues until midnight for permissible time and Darura time, time of necessity, until the time of Salatul Fajr. That's the five daily prayer times, walhamdulillah. Every one of them, we should pray them in the earliest time, except Salatul Isha. Salatul Isha, it is better if you delay it. ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Salah has been prescribed in its set time, and we should pray in the set time. We should not be like the one who prays towards the end of that time, up, down, kiss the ground, and he wants to finish his salah very quickly. What khushu, what sincerity, what concentration are you going to have in a salah like that? Allahum sta'an. Ya Abdullah, ya Amatullah, that was T, and T was for time. T is also for tahiyatul masjid. When we enter the masjid, pray two rakahs of salah before sitting down. Even if you sat down, you can stand up quickly and pray two rakahs of salah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving the Jummah khutbah, a man walked in and he sat. Prophet ﷺ stopped the khutbah, asked him, have you prayed two rakahs of prayer? He said, no. Prophet ﷺ told him, stand up and pray two rakahs of prayer. Showing us the importance of tahiyyatul masjid, insha'Allah. Ya Abdullah, ya Amatullah, that was T. We now move on to the letter U. And U is for what? U is for understanding what you are saying in the prayer. U is for the one who understands and glad tidings to the one who understands. The number of books out there are too numerous to mention. The number of videos out there teaching what the salah means, teaching the meanings of the surahs we recite in salah are too numerous to mention. Lazy is the one who does not learn. Lazy is the one who does not make the effort to study what he is saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are reciting the kalam of Allah. You are reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, make a concerted effort to learn exactly what you are reciting in your salah. Learn what Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la means. What does Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim mean? at lillahi wa sal What does it mean, SubhanAllah? Get a small book on the topic and understand, insha'Allah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, V is for validity. A salah might be valid, but as for qabul with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as for acceptance with Allah, that's a different story. We would pray our salah, perform the pillars and the wajibat, etc. So the salah has a tick in that it's valid. But as for qabul with Allah, that's a different story. 
your concentration, your ikhlas, your sincerity in the prayer, all of that determines whether the salah is accepted by Allah or not. So validity is easy, but acceptance by Allah, that's the main objective. Acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the main objective. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, may Allah make us from those whose salawat are accepted by Him, insha'Allah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, W for what? W for witr, witr, witr salah. This is that singular prayer that we pray before we go to sleep or when we wake up in the middle of the night. It's the last prayer of the night, insha'Allah. Prophet ﷺ would say, Ya Ahl al-Qur'an, O Tiru, people of the Qur'an, perform this witr salah. Majority of the scholars we know state that it is a highly recommended sunnah. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah states that the one who is lax with regards to his witr, then his testimony will not be accepted in a court of law. Why? Because he is a person who is unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, make sure that you pray your witr salah every single night. Either before you sleep or if you have the ability when you wake up in the middle of the night, pray some tahajjud salah, some qiyamul layl, salatul layl, and then perform this witr salah, insha'Allah. You can pray 11, you can pray 9, you can pray 7, 5, 3, you can even pray it in one rak'ah. Walhamdulillah. X, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, is for what? Is for exiting the salah. And you exit the salah with what? With Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. As for what some do, they turn to the right, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Then Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. They stop here. They do a bit of a cross. They take a bit of a break here. And then they continue the salam. No, there's no such thing. It's like Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Simple as that. Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, why? Why is for what? Why do we pray? Because Allah has obliged this upon us. Because we need it more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking it from us. We need salah. We need salah. As many of the Sahaba would say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu, wazinu anfusakum qabla an tuzanu, and, and pray before you are prayed over. Weigh yourself before you are weighed. Hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable. And pray your salah before you are prayed over in Salatul Janaza. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, the peace, tranquility, contentment you get after a two rak'ah salah with full concentration, the world's money cannot equate the value of that two rak'ah salah. Subhanallah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, may Allah make us from amongst those who find that ladha in their prayers. And lastly, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, we come to the letter Z. And Z is for what? Z is for dhikr. Once we mention our salam to the right and the left, then we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak fi adal jalali wal ikram. Allahumma la mani'a lima a'tayt wa la mu'tiya lima mana'at wa la yanfa'u idal jad minka al jad. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. We then recite Ayatul Kursi, we recite the Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, we recite Mu'awwithatain, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. We make the dhikr, Subhanallah, 33 times, Alhamdulillah, 33 times, Allahu Akbar, 33 times, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. And with that, we conclude the dhikr after salah. Then if you want to lift up your hands, and you want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to ask Him for your needs, you have issues, you have problems you want from the treasures of Allah, lift up your hands and make whatever dua you want, bi idnillahi ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, with that, we have come to the end of this episode, and with it concludes the A to Z of Salah, walhamdulillah. We discuss the matters of that which breaks the salah. We discussed the matter of jama'ah salah. We spoke about the importance of the prayer. We discussed the issues of the head covering in salah. We spoke about the aura of the male. We spoke about the aura of the female. The aura of the male, the area between the navel and the knee must always be covered. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. We discussed the issues of khushu, how to increase our khushu. We went through the sunnah mu'akkada prayers, walhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala record this in our scale of good deeds. May Allah make us from amongst those who have khushu in their prayer. May Allah make us from amongst those who are punctual with their prayer. 
Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, remember, if your knowledge is above average, your ibadah is also supposed to be above average. Jazakumullahu khayran. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala amdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah.